Good morning from Essex, where we're celebrating World Book Day and the final of 500 words with Mary Poppins, Where's Wally, the Oxford English Dictionary. Are we going to have fun? Yeah! So last year, Breakfast launched the BBC's 500 words competition asking children to write a story they would love to read. And after almost 44,000 entries, tonight the winners will be finally revealed. And it follows a grand final which was hosted at Buckingham Palace. Do I get a sense of some chaos just about to start at a primary school in Thurrock? Because John's there now. Morning to you, <laughs> John. You, the eye is drawn to people behind you, if I'm honest with you. Help me. Help me. <laughs> Let me out. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So wide awake here. Uh, good morning. This is Arthur Bugler School in Thurrock in Essex, one of many schools right across the UK that took part in 500 Words. And of course, today is World Book Day. So schools across the country, kids are getting dressed up as their favourite characters from books. Should we have a quick look through? Who are you? I'm Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. And you're terrifying. Thank you. <laughs> what time do you get up to do your makeup? Um, Five ten sort of time. Wow, that's when I'm normally having my makeup done. Uh, yeah. We've got the wimpy kid here. Good morning. Yeah. That looks morning. great. How'd you make that? Um, well, my dad painted it and I put the um, string around it. Fantastic. Doctor Who. Morning. You got morning. any sonic screwdriver? Yep. Ready for action. Brilliant. Yeah. We've got Paddington. Hello. Who have we got here? Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins, you all look so good. You've made so much effort, the teachers. Wait till you see the teachers. But look at who we've got here. Sophia has dressed up as... Well, what's the story you've created? Uh, the Beast of Buckingham Palace by David Williams. And you've turned yourself into, into a book of it. Yes. And Buckingham Palace is where the judging and the final took place for 500 words. Be on the one show tonight. But do you want to see behind the scenes? We'll take you there. Right now. Judges, welcome to Buckingham Palace. Look at this. Oh. Francesca, would you like to come here? Yes. Frank, if you'd like to go here. Lenny, I think you're at the end. Okay. Oh, lovely. <clears throat> Can't wait for the pasties to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny, what have you got there? It says 500 words, judges. I'm very sorry not to be with you today at Buckingham Palace but wanted to wish you the best of British luck as you read the 50 finalist stories. You have a very tough job today, tell me about it. Selecting the winners and runners-up, and I don't envy you at all. See you soon for the final. Camilla, Camilla. <laughs> Camilla R. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nice. That is nice. Very there nice. There we go. Across the United Kingdom, in their bedrooms, in their classrooms, children have been writing stories. Stories that will amaze you, will amuse you, will scare you, will sadden you, and every single one of them has been checked through by an army of volunteer judges, and in your files are the 50 finalists, and Her Majesty has invited all of you to choose the winners of 500 Words 2024. Are you ready? Charlie, what, what do you think? Should we start with the younger category, five to seven-year-olds? Broadly, what do you think of what you've read? Well, it's interesting because the younger category, the stories are always just that tiny bit madder. <laughs> um, they're not so sort of worried about all the things they've learnt at school about how you should tell a story. So that they, they do have a lot of fun with the stories. Mm. Um, Come and live on my planet. Make it colourful and happy and fill it full of friendship. Then I sat back and waited. Do you think they will come? I mean, it's really revealing what a difference somebody reading it out makes. When he came back, he had a parcel from his great uncle Roger. It was a coat. The coat was a powerful coat. It gave him the power to solve crimes and mysteries. When he put the coat on, he was no longer Darren. He was putting with a coat on, solving crimes. <laughs> You've got to say the full title every time. Putting with a coat on, solving crimes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> These are the criteria we have to look out for. <laughs> Plot, yeah. language, originality, characterization and enjoyment. You've got to choose gold, silver and bronze. And we're going to have to do it quite quickly. He thinks his vocation is to be... Rawr, but it's not. Like Lenny said, it's about something. It's a very original take. I think probably we've given it an hour. It's nearly an hour up, and then we'll do an hour for the second lot. We've got 
two very funny. Well, they're all they all have a humor, but then we've got one that's a bit more serious. Okay, we have bronze, silver, and gold. Only one other category to go. Oh gosh. Please help one. yourself with the biscuit. Ooh. They're Thank gorgeous. you very much. Thank indeed. you very Whoa, much. Wow, they're beautiful. It was quite a task, but we got there, and you'll find out who the winners are and hear from them on the one show tonight, BBC One, seven o'clock. All of you guys took part, right? And this school has put together all of their written work into this special book that they can take home and have for forever. How cool is that, Mrs Cordell? It's pretty awesome. I must say, the children work so hard. We wanted the children to just inspire their writing and be really creative. And so what we did is we encouraged them to take part in the BBC 500 Words and then give us a copy of their stories as well. And then we got talented artists to illustrate them as well. And we've had over 89 children involved in this project, so it's just amazing. Paddington Bear, thank you very much no indeed. <laughs> it's lovely to be here this morning. We've got an illustrator here, Fiona Lumbers, top, top children's illustrator, did the, the Luna series. She's here in the school hall this morning drawing a special picture which the kids here will take part in and see up close as the programme goes on. We've got some other surprises as well. Helen's here from Oxford University Press because all those tens of thousands of stories that are submitted, you do something really interesting with them. That's right, we take every single story that is submitted to 500 words and every word, every letter goes into this huge database which is called the Oxford Children's Corpus and what we do is we look at all of the words, all of the language that children use in their stories and we're able to analyse it and we can learn all sorts of things about how children write, uh, the topics they choose to write about, the different themes. And we do this every time with 500 words. And so we get all of this insight. It's fantastic. So all of your words, you each did 500 words. Each story is now going to be where? In a database in, in Oxford forever? Forever. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> I know. Every single word. And apparently there have been so many 500 words submitted over the years now that there's now half a billion words, 500 million words have been written by kids around, around the UK. That's right. So even if your story doesn't make it to the final 50 or isn't a winner, in actual fact, every story is a winner for me because it goes into this database and we can learn so much from everybody's writing. Give yourselves a round of applause. Brilliant. Well, we look forward to spending more time here throughout this morning. Who likes surprises? Me! I love them. You love them? I love them. We've got an amazing surprise for you later. We've got Francesca Simon, the horrid Henry author, is going to be here to read you a story. <laughs> but that's not all. That's all I'm saying. Nagra and Charlie, what stories have you got this morning? <laughs> we, we've got nothing compared nothing. to those stories, John. It, our, our story is rather <laughs> pale by comparison, to be honest with you. But it uh, looks like fun there. Have a great morning. We'll see you a bit later on. Say bye-bye. They're so bright and chirpy. Yeah. First thing in the morning, aren't they? So, last year, you're probably aware, Breakfast launched the BBC's 500 Words competition. There they are. In big letters, uh, stories. That's what it's all about. It's all about stories. Yeah, and who doesn't... I know it's the wrong time of day, but who doesn't like being read a story? I think we could do with time? one right now, couldn't I we? think there are people around the country, I know in a particular place where John's at, where people are just being your majesty. quietly, Goodbye, beautifully read your to. Majesty. Slowly, perfect Peter retreated backwards, bowing and smiling. Oh, shut up! snarled horrid Henry. He glared at Peter. If Peter said, Your Majesty, one more time, he would, he would. Horrid Henry wasn't sure what he'd do, but it would be horrible. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Francesca Simon, the author of Horrid Henry. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> we are live. On World Book Day and on 500 Words Final Day at Arthur Bugler School in Thurrock in Essex. And Francesca, what's it like to be in a real school with real children with a real book in your hand on this day? It's absolutely wonderful. This is what World Book Day is about. It's about reading and books and celebrating that sort of shared joy together. 
So it feels like a, a huge party and it's absolutely great being here. I saw that smile on your face just as you walked in here this morning. Yeah. Well, it's just all the kids in costumes and I just feel like I'm surrounded by people like me who love books. Yeah, you are also, of course, one of our star celebrity judges on 500 <laughs> Words. You went to the palace, you, you read through all the entries. Well, not all 40,000 of them, yeah. but, but yeah, the final ones. You picked the winners. How has that been to have the competition back? All, you know, me and my fellow judges, um, for us, we've all been doing it for about eight years. We missed it so much. We're so grateful to Her Majesty the Queen, who really knocked some heads together and said, bring this back. Um, just the pleasure of reading these great stories, of reading them out loud to each other, of being part of a celebration of reading and writing. And all of you entered, right? You all Yay! put pen to paper. So I'm trying to say 500 words, 500 words, 500. That's lots of words, right? That's like thousands and thousands of yeah. words just from this school. It's such a special thing that on breakfast we're so proud and excited to have been a part of for, for the last 12 months, building up to this big final tonight on BBC One at seven o'clock. Um, and you mentioned Queen Camilla. She is genuinely passionate about this, isn't she? Well, she's a big reader and she has, was our, you know, a, a sort of a, our extra judge and she's brought a lot to the table. And again, you know, just having the celebration at the palace was so special to yeah. be to be in that ballroom, to be there also with 50, you know, with our 50 finalists and their parents. It was just a wonderful, wonderful day. It really was. Uh, you know what? I think we've got a clip of Queen Camilla addressing the grand finalists uh, and we can hear her now. Where did you own... Uh... Hang in there for a moment. This, I think this is the moment where Queen Camilla is talking to the surrounding group of people, all fantastically enthused by well, books. So let's how could listen. You not? How could you not be? They were at Buckingham Palace and listening to the Queen, who had met all the finalists, um, who were all just... And John was there with all the judges explaining kind of what was going on. Um, actually, we can hear it now. Where did your own uh, love of reading come from? I think it came from my father, who loved reading more than anything else. He had the biggest collection of books you've ever seen on almost everything. And I think that's where my love of books started. It's Queen Camilla talking to the crowds at Buckingham Palace in the ballroom for the final. You're going to be watching tonight? Yeah! On BBC One. Some of you got through to the later rounds of the competition, didn't you? Um, and what is it that, that inspires all of you for reading? What, what is it? Let me, let me ask you, what, what, what do you love about reading books? What, about, what I love about reading books is it gives imagination to your brain and it lets it function through... It's kind of like a little holiday in your brain, but in books. I love that. And, well, it's just fun to just let your imagination run through a book and just let it, like, take you in to another world and just... Read it. <laughs> I love that a holiday in your brain. That's such a good way of putting it. Did you come up with that? No. Okay. I took it from the <laughs> <laughs> say you did. That's what we all do. We all say we've done it. Ourselves. Okay. Well, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, one of the things that's been inspiring all of you is Matilda, the Roald Dahl story, isn't it? Yeah. And you've all seen, seen the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And you've all been singing this. So do you want to give us a burst of the song to BBC Breakfast viewers this morning? Yeah. Here we go. They're a little bit distracted because look who's just turned up. That was quite a surprise, wasn't it? Yay! It's Matilda, the real Matilda. Alicia, welcome to breakfast. Welcome to Arthur Bugler Primary School. Thank World you so much book. for having me. Well, it's so, look, they're all like, look. <laughs> you must get recognised everywhere you go. The movie has been huge, but it's also brought a joy of reading 
to so many millions more kids around the world. Yes, um, it definitely feels incredible, but sometimes it feels very strange, especially when I'm in public and, you know, some people come up to me. and Because to me, I'm just Alicia, and then sometimes it feels very strange, but, I mean, it's incredible, and it's so, Matilda's so inspiring, and, and so is the film, and it's amazing that so many more people are starting to read because of her. Yeah, and you were one of our celebrity readers at the final at Buckingham Palace, so you read one of the winning entries out and you're not allowed to say what that entry was or give any clues, because all will be revealed tonight. But what was it like to be there at the palace with the Queen, part of this final? It was incredible. It really was. Me and my mom, we flew over and we were sitting in one of the rooms and we were looking at each other like, is this real? Like, it was a huge pinch me moment. And when I got home and I went to school the next day, I was thinking, did that really happen? Did I just meet the Queen? It was incredible, it was surreal, but I don't think I'll ever get over it that I was actually there. That's how these kids are now feeling seeing you. <laughs> You're not the Queen, but you are Matilda. And look at their all feeling. <laughs> you look really excited. Have you got any questions you'd like to ask? Anything you'd like to ask? What inspired you to act? Well, a lot of things inspired me to act, but I think the main one is my two older sisters. They love to do it as well, and they've always been my inspiration, and I've always really looked up to them, and they've always been my role models ever since I was young. So I've always wanted to be like them, so that's what got me into acting and what got me here today. Are you a keen reader yourself? I do. I love to read, and when I was younger, me and my sisters wrote lots of stories. Um, it really is incredible, and like I was saying earlier, it's just so amazing that so many kids have started to read and be like Matilda and really look up to her, because every day I try to be a bit more like Matilda in every way that I can be. But yeah, it's amazing. Who likes to be like Matilda? <laughs> yeah, lots of hands up. Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz is here as well. Have you got any questions? Anything you'd like to ask? Um... No, I don't think so. Well, you've got a brilliant Toto the dog, haven't you? You've got your yeah. Wizard of Oz, but you've been telling you've been writing a story yourself for 500 words. What yeah. was that about? Um, it was about an adventure through time. Me and my friend Larry, we Hi, both Larry. wrote a book of a time machine, how it goes back in time and goes into the future. Then after all that happened, it was actually just a mutual dream. Oh. Ooh. Oh. That sounds good, doesn't it? Do you want to read it? Yeah, I would definitely love to read it. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing that they've done here, can you pass me your book there that you've got? Because here at this school, they've put all their uh, final stories, all the stories that the kids did, into this book uh, of short stories, the Arthur Bugler uh, primary short story collection. So you're all in print forever. You all get one of these to take home, which is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. What a special World Book Day. I think we should finish before we go back to Nagra and Charlie, with you guys singing Matilda again with Matilda, right? Yes? OK, so you need to watch BBC One tonight, 7 o'clock, for the final of uh, 500 words. OK, are we ready? Yes! Who's gonna, you've got to start. Take it away. Where are we going to start from? You guys help me. You ready? Three, two, one. Where are do you get John Kay from BBC Breakfast, award-winning authors reading to you, you then get film stars in and you get to sing with them. That's all it. on a Thursday morning before 8 o'clock. A, a bit bad talking over the singing, really. Oh. There we go, there we go, we heard it out. Yeah, what a day, what a day. So tonight is when everyone will find out. I think we might be talking to some of the winners tomorrow morning. Yeah. And you can see the big words there, 500 words. We're talking about storytelling and the joy of storytelling. Yes, the BBC's competition, of course, asked children to write stories they want to read. There were 44,000 entries, and tonight the winners will finally be revealed following a grand final, which was hosted at Buckingham Palace. So there's a primary school in Thurrock who will have a story to tell about the man from BBC Breakfast in the red shirt who came to see us and it was a special day. That'll be a story, John. Anything works, Charlie. Anything works in this competition. So, yeah, you could even do that. Maybe you should enter next year. Are you under 11, though? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, maybe not. I don't but think welcome. we should answer that, John, welcome. because it could get, it could get spiky, <laughs> couldn't it? <laughs>
<laughs> I think you're right. This is Arthur Bugler School in Thorock in Essex. A year ago today, World Book Day last year, we revealed here on Breakfast that 500 Words was coming back to the BBC. It is back, and here we are exactly 12 months later, ahead of the grand final on a special one show tonight, 7 o'clock on BBC One. We've been celebrating it here today with Fiona among them. Fiona Lumbers, <laughs> illustrator. You illustrate one of the winners tonight, which you're not going to reveal. My lips are sealed. But you've done this amazing picture for the kids here. Well, I have. I've been here all morning, loving the celebrations, the costumes, the celebration of reading. It's just been... It's like Christmas Day for illustrators. It's <laughs> just brilliant. It, feels like? it really does, yeah. It's just a, such a special day. Yeah, it's been great. People watching will recognise Luna, your creation here uh, on the picture. But also, explain who's this. So, uh, I thought that seeing as there was an amazing surprise this morning involving Matilda and Alicia, the actress, um, I thought that I would immortalise her on a picture for the school to celebrate World Book Day 2024. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, a little bit earlier, Alicia Weir from the movie Matilda uh, surprised the kids here, which was a fantastic moment. What do you think of this? It looks incredible. It's so realistic. It's really strange seeing myself on paper, but it's so creative and you smashed it. It looks amazing. Thanks. Can you do the pose for us? Should we compare? Let me move out the way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, you're doing the pose as well, Fiona. That's great. <laughs> you say you're going to give that picture to the school? Yes, I thought I'd present it to the school as a memento of the day to kind of remember everything that's been going on this morning because I think it's just been such a special day for the school. Thanks. So. We'll give it to them in just a moment. Well, Thank you okay. both so much. It's one of those days, World Book Day, where every school in the country goes a little bit strange. I just walked down the corridor a moment ago. Uh, I saw three little pigs going to the loo. Uh, I've seen an umpa lumpa. Uh, I've seen dinosaurs getting their football boots on. Wait till you see what's going to be in here. Good morning. morning. These guys look absolutely fantastic, don't they? They're all ready for World Book Day. The teachers are ready as well. Yes, we are super keen. Paddington, Professor McGonagall, yes. and thank you so much for having us. And the, just explain to our viewers the relationship between you two, <laughs> because this is like something out of a story as well. It is magical. Um, so Joe used to be my teacher when I came here as a child. Mrs. Livingstone. <laughs> Mrs. Sorry. Sorry, Miss. <laughs> Did she behave herself then? She was a very good girl. Very quiet, and <laughs> not how she is now. But she's very good. <laughs> hey. You've been brilliant. You've been brilliant to have us here this morning on a busy morning. And we've got so many special guests. Also, Francesca Simon, creator of Horrid Henry, and Christina Rugo, gold medalist. And just to explain to you, today you are launching something very special, aren't you? Yeah, something very different. I'll be launching my Track Changes Book Club which is primarily focused at young people and children and just trying to inspire youngsters to keep reading. Because we think of you as an athlete, yes. but of course you ha you're passionate about linguistics. You've studied linguistics yeah. and language. I've done a lot of reading. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of reading. I've also did a second degree a couple of years ago, which was law. So I've spent many, 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 many hours with my face in a book. But no, reading has been something that I've always done as a kid. I've always loved reading, read everything. And I really do think that it's contributed towards me having good communication skills, um, some confidence, and it was just really great for my creativity and being able to just send your mind somewhere else for a bit. So I, I did realise that reading was something that has followed me throughout my whole life and there's no better way than to set up a book club to <laughs> keep inspiring young people to keep reading. Absolutely. Francesca Simon, creator of Horrid Henry, you've been reading some of your books to these kids this morning. You all love Horrid Henry, right? Yes! <laughs> what do you love about reading yourself? I think the sort of chance to walk in someone else's footsteps, the chance to try a different life, a different world, to kind of, it's like time travel. It's like, what if? What if that was me? What would I do? How would I be? And this kind of constant engagement with different lives and different worlds. I, it's, for me, I've been a voracious reader since I was seven years old. I never wanted to do anything except read. 
So I was very boring to have over as a, for a play date because I would just go to my friend's bookshelf, see if there was a book I'd never read, and then lie down on their bed and read it. Well, you haven't been boring here this morning, entertaining <laughs> these uh, brilliantly dressed up right. kids. <laughs> uh, you're one of the judges of 500 Words. You met there at Buckingham Palace. You were there for the final that we're going to see tonight. All will be revealed, but no spoilers. Just tell us about the kind of quality of, of entries this year, what you read. Um, I thought the, this year's entries were exceptionally high, and I loved the kind of the variety of them. I loved how imaginative they were. I also loved that we had a lot of children who were writing in their own voices. Mm. You know, they were really telling stories they wanted to tell in their own way, because that is something that's really important to us as judges, <coughs> is to kind of really feel an individual telling us their story. They weren't just writing about something they'd seen on telly. Yeah, well, it'll be on the telly tonight, won't it? It will be. You'll all be able to see it at 7 o'clock tonight. Are you going to watch it? Yeah! Oompa Loompa, are you going to watch it? Yeah. I'm very glad to hear it. You're not working in the chocolate factory tonight? No, OK, OK, it's good. <laughs> the police have arrived, everybody. I think impersonating a police officer is a slight uh, crime, isn't it? But uh, Richard is the headmaster here, so he is a position of authority. Thank you so much for having us. I, it, I know it's a tricky time for you. You're dealing with rack and concrete and stuff, but you've been brilliant hosts. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's all about the children, the promoting the love of reading. The Osborne Trust, if they've been amazing, so we've managed to do it today. We're so pleased for you to be here. OK, and everything, because you've got half the school out of action, but you've managed to squeeze us all in. We have, we have. But again, all for the children. This is going to last, have a legacy for our readers. Um, what an amazing day for them. Could not turn it down. Well, that's what it's all about. And look, you've got a lovely picture from Fiona as well. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. That's absolutely phenomenal. And that would go pride of place in our school. And again, many children, thousands over the years will see this. So. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Well done, everybody. <laughs> Happy World Book Day. Nacker and Charlie. Thanks, John. Um, we've had some lovely pictures that you've sent in as well. Thank you very much for that. Of course, the winner's going to be revealed for 500 words this evening. Take a look at eight-year-old Tilly, who's dressed as Amelia Earhart, the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Her story is, of course, the non-fiction series of books called Little People, Big Dreams. Her school hopes to inspire pupils to be curious about the world around them. That's a cool look, actually. Very cool. Very cool look. Um, not just children getting excited either. These are the staff. Well, look at that. Look at that. This is the Ann Taylor Children's Centre in Hackney, dressed as... Well, see if you can work it out. Uh, smiley face on the left. That's from sure the Mr. Men. That is, that's, that's the Mr. Men. That's it? the Mr. Men. No, it's on. Uh, There's a pirate, Elmer the Elephant, Little Red Riding Hood, and a giraffe. Uh, one more for you, Hendrix. Uh, four years old, 11-year-old uh, Etta uh, in London, uh, getting into the spirit of things. Uh, where's Wally? There's a lot of where's, wa where's Wally. We see Where's Wally costumes quite a bit, don't we? Well, they're, they're, they're the convenient ones. 